Okay, so I'm going to do a video about the analog heat. And I realize that right now, this is the mono machine and the machine drum, and obviously not the heat, but uh, I just want to show the sound source that I'm going to be using to start with. So, on this side I've just got a basic beat. I've actually got two, which I'll go through real quick. Um, and on this side I've also got a sort of basic rhythmic element, which goes like this. Which, combined with this over here, So, you know, that's, you know, something special, but I think it uh, will sound good through the heat. Um, <clears throat> but I've also got another beat which I added. And on here as well. So that's all well and good, but I also have a pad which I will bring in later because I don't really want to focus on it right away because it will just make the whole signal messy. Um, I feel like the analog heat does really good stuff to beats. Like it's it's kind of, uh, I don't know, it, it just excels at beats. Like it will work on anything, like I've been using it for mastering, I've been using it on pads, I've been using it on heaps of different things, but I feel like it just, for beats, especially with the envelope follower, it's just really... It's really designed for that, you know, um, in my opinion. So I've got this pad as well. But let's leave that for the moment. Let's go back to this. And let's also go back to this original beat. All right, so that's the sound source. Uh, the analog heat's over here. So I'm gonna move the camera and we'll start on that. All right. Okay, so here's the heat. Um, I've got it completely blank at the moment. I'm just gonna turn this drive down. Um, it's on a clean boost, no filtering, no EQ. Uh, I'm, I'm, I did do a video um, about this machine uh, yesterday. Um, and even though I was pretty happy with the video, uh, some elements of it clipped. The sound was clipping. I find that when I'm using the heat, it's really easy just to get carried away. Um, with processing the sound and really pushing it um, and when you're using it you don't really notice that it's clipping but if you're recording it to the computer um, you sometimes have to be a bit aware of that so a lot of the a lot of the video had clipping in it and I just thought this isn't good enough so I'm gonna make a new video um, but that time when I made the video I kind of went through all of the settings and was like okay this is what this one sounds like this is what this one sounds like but this time I think that's that's a bit boring and even though there's <clears throat> uh, something to be said for that kind of video those videos already exist, like Sonic State did an exhaustive one with uh, Chank from Electron and I just feel like that one, like I love that video. <laughs> it just sounds a bit silly to say, especially now that I already own the heat, but I just I just really like that, what they did with that video. It really demonstrates the machine. So I'm not going to try and do that. What I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to play the beat. Um, I'll talk through elements that, um, that I think are worth talking about, but I'm just going to kind of go with it and see what happens. Um, and by doing so, I'm pretty sure it will demonstrate the features of this thing. Uh, so let's get stuck into it. You heard the beat before, I'm going to start playing it again, and I'm just going to bring in the drive, and then I'm just going to go. Alright, let's do it. Very quiet right now, I'll just point out, but that's because there's no processing, so let's, let's bring in that drive.
Okay, so <clears throat> already you can see how crazy this thing is, and I've only just done a few different settings. So I just wanted to quickly talk about the filter. Um, Multi-mode sounds delicious. I fucking love this filter. Uh, it's basically the same filter, I think, that's in the um, Analog 4 and the Rhythm. But the thing about this one is I, uh, something about it just sounds better. Like, I've had the Analog 4 for a while, and even though I think that's a beautiful synth, and the filters on it are great, this this filter just sounds sweeter, uh, like creamier or something. Um, granted, there's a whole ho heap of drive feeding into it, and I just feel like you can push it right, way harder, and that makes it sound better. Um, but in addition to that, I've obviously done some stuff to it, like they've worked on it and made it better. Like, you know, they've they've been working on this filter for several years since the A4 came out. So, anyway. Um, I'm not going to go through each one, you know, you got low pass, uh, I think it's 24 dB and 12 dB, um, band pass, high pass, uh, 24 dB, 12 dB, I could be wrong about these, I haven't really looked at the manual, but that's, that's the general idea, um, band reject, I think, and I don't remember what this one's called, but it's like band pass, but you don't lose any of the bottom end or high end where you go, so I might just go to that one because you create some interesting results. I'm going to change the beat in a sec just to sort of mix things up a bit and give, give some different sounds because one thing I've noticed about it is like 808 kick drums um, or just kick drums that have a really long tail um, and a real boom to them just sound fantastic through this. So I've set up a, a beat uh, which is lots of like toms and, and kicks just sort of, you know, with the long decays so that should sound interesting but just real quick I'll, I'll keep going with the beat that I have. Oh, 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 oh,
Okay, let's go on to a different beat. So this is the beat now. I'll just turn the drive right down, the filtering back to normal, and the envelope depth to off. Uh, just one quick thing real quick, uh, <laughs> is the envelope and the LFO, um, on the filter page you can uh, assign them, there's just an automatic assignment to both for the filter, but on each page you've got an extra assignment, and its default is set to drive, um, with a, an EQ as well. I, I'm Again, I haven't really read the manual because I don't really feel like I need to, um, but I'm pretty sure this just means that this is only going to affect that um, that section of the, the the spectrum that you select, you know. Um, but either way, you've got heaps of different destinations. You can send it to all different sorts, so you can get some really mad shit going on, uh, especially with things like LFO speed, um, with the envelope follower. Like I'll demonstrate that in a sec. But for the moment, let's just listen to this new beat. <laughs> One thing I really love about this is you've got this active button as well, which just basically, I mean, I've already demonstrated it, it just cuts off the effect entirely, sends the clean signal through. Um, and this is really handy for A-B comparisons uh, when, like, mastering and stuff, like just being able to hit that button, hear the effect, what it's doing to the sound, very helpful. And it, in extreme cases like this, it's just dramatic, like... <laughs> Uh, one real quick thing I just wanted to show as well is that in addition to this drive knob, which is sort of like the, this is like the piece de resistance of the whole machine, um, you've also got a dirt uh, knob on the filter. So if I take away some of this LFO stuff, let's just go no and, and turn this off as well. Uh, I'll just demonstrate what that sounds like. So I'll just put the filter back to normal, um, turn the dirt up, and play the sound. <laughs> demonstrated so I'll turn the driver
just going to bring in some more uh, beats. Just some extra percussion from the mono machine. <laughs> I love it. All right, so I'm just gonna move on to round fuzz. Um, it's probably one of my favorites so far. It just, I don't know what it's doing. Um, it just sounds cool. Sounds like, like in addition to just being distortion, it sounds like it's doing something, like it's wave shaping it somehow, um, or wave folding, I guess. But either way, I don't know enough about that sort of stuff or what goes on inside this thing to comment, so let's just listen to it. hear that like it just sounds <clears throat> I take some of this beat out a little bit so it's not so busy it just sounds so uh, harmonically rich like I feel like you get extra oh how do you even say like extra <clears throat> like notes I guess um, playing through it like fifths and stuff <laughs> Oh, my God. 
And listen to that noise. The fucking... The high gain has such a noise level. But it's kind of pleasing. Like... For a certain sound, I'm glad it's there. Gives it that real fizziness. And you can just play the filter through it without anything. So let's listen to this pad. I'm just going to get rid of this, the drum beats. And all we've got now is the pad. And let's uh, get rid of all of this, turn the drive right down, change the filtering, and the EQ back to where it was. And let's start again. So I mean, already you've got a nice warming effect just from the clean boost. Like I really like that aspect of it is the fact that you can kind of just, you can turn something which is boldly digital into something that sounds quite analog. Like, yeah, it's still got that digital sort of uh, fizzy wavetable y kind of quality to it coming out of the mono machine, but into this, it just sort of transforms it into something really warm. Um, and I just, I can't speak highly of this machine enough for doing that because uh, I, I am a very, <clears throat> very fond of digital stuff. And in my, uh, <clears throat> my recording process and my creative process, uh, I use a lot of digital tools, even though I love analog gear too. But this allows you to use those digital tools and still add that analog warmth to it afterwards. Which I know that there are a lot of things that do that. It's not like this is the first box to ever do something like that. But um, it's one of the first that I've ever had that does something like that. And in addition to that, I think it's really creative the way they've implemented it because you can do that but you can also go so far beyond that in sound design um, so the one thing I did want to demonstrate is you can get a really nice chorus kind of effect or phaser kind of effect using this band reject filter so let's turn the resonance right down probably put it to about there and go to the LFO or oh, sorry add the uh, filter effect which I'll move it over here and then I'll play the pad I really like that effect. So let's try some other ones. Let's try some saturation.
So what I'm doing now is I'm setting up the envelope follower to kind of act like a like a filter on a synth, um, so that it's you know it's following it's just following the the notes of the synth as if it were built into it. Okay, I feel like that's probably enough. Alright, so that's my video about the analog heat. Uh, I'm definitely going to do more. I've only had it for about a week. I'm totally just scratching the surface with it. Um, I also got at the same time a Korg Volker Kick and a Korg Volker FM. So I'm going to, you know, I'll use them um, with the heat at some point, you know, combine the two because like the kick and the heat together is just fucking brutal. Um, definitely a match made in heaven so I'll definitely be doing that um, and yeah like I said I've just only scratched the surface this is kind of just like my intro to this like the way I like to use it um, so far the way the sounds I like to get out of it uh, the brutality of it um, I just really wanted to sort of show it to the world because I feel like it's a piece of gear that sort of speaks to me uh, especially the way I'm working at the moment a lot of distortion a lot of uh, really crunchy heavy sounds um, and this thing just has that in spades so uh, yeah uh, stay tuned I'll definitely have more real soon um, so like you know subscribe and like my videos and do whatever um, and stay tuned for more so thanks see you later